My name is Julia Gurgler. I'm Rachel Exler. And I'm Tommy Gurgley. I'm uh, from Denver Jewish Day School. And our fourth member, he's not here, but he helped us a lot. His name's Avi Kerr. Yeah. Oh, no! You need to pay me back for that. Um, no, I didn't. Ellie ran into me, so he should pay for it. How could it possibly be my fault, Rachel? I was walking on my own. How could I have expected just to drop my phone? This is exactly like when you hit me with your self-driving car. Oh, no. Not that again. It wasn't my fault, Shimon. I need you to pay me back. I need money for reconciliation because you violated two different categories of damages, Shevet and Ripui, lost wages and medical expenses. You also need to pay for the damages on my car, Benezi Queen. How on earth did I violate all those categories? I'm glad you asked. When you hit me, you hurt me physically. Because of that, I need to get checked on, which me would mean seeing a doctor and paying for that trip. I don't want to pay for that. And because it was your fault, that goes under the category of repooing. I would probably need to miss some work, which means I would lose wages. That falls under a separate category, shove it. Let me explain this to you again. There was a pedestrian jaywalking in the middle of the road. He is a person, which means he is always muad, according to Baba Kama 26a, Adam Muad Laola. And at public domain, when a tree falls onto a highway, it is considered unforeseeable damage. In the first example, the pedestrian entering the street is analogous to the material that suddenly appears on a roadway. As a result of this unnatural condition in the situation, any damage that ensues legally cannot be counted against an individual. The latter example from the Talmud falls under the same heading because the principal could not foresee damage that would occur from the agent. But aren't you, doesn't that make you also move out as a person? Actually, no I'm not. I am Ones Gamor, according to the Ramah on Choshem Mishpat 378.1. I had absolutely no control over the car and how it reacts. There is no manual override. Tosafot on Baba Kama 27b upholds the fact that I am Ones and not an agent of transgression, as I could not do anything to change the car's movements. Even though a person is always considered muad, the car is not an extension of me in this case. If I had the ability to control the car, it would make the car an extension of me. However, the car is something I own, but can't control, so it is like my animal, my shore. Because my car, and its company, had no history of causing damage, my car is short Tom. You can call Mr. Levin to back me up. I will. Hello, that's me, and it's Levine. Uh, I'm in my self-driving car right now, uh, but let me put you on speakerphone. She's right. Our program is designed to avoid fatalities. In this case, the car didn't mess up. The program actually acted as it was supposed to. Had the car continued in its path, there would have been a greater amount of damage, a death. The car should not even be considered a shore muad after this accident because the car acted to save someone's life. Essentially, the car acts always with pikuach nefesh in mind. This negates the car and my company from any liability. I should also not have to pay because according to Sanhedrin 74a, a pursuer chasing after an assailant in order to save the victim is exempt from payment for vessels that he broke in the process, whether they belong to the attacker, to the victim, or anyone else. This means that there's a special exemption for damages caused during a rescue mission, and my car and its company was saving the pedestrian's life. If not for this, no one would bother to save his fellow. Thanks, Mr. Levine. So if your car company won't pay for it, but also Rachel is innocent, who does that make liable for these damages? The, the pedestrian. pedestrian! Surely the pedestrian didn't know he was going to cause all this damage. Did this make him a shogeg, a person who acted accidentally? Yes, he might have acted accidentally, but he still has to pay for the damages. Everyone is allowed in the Rashid Harabi, of course. But the Roche asserts that when two people are walking in a public domain and walk into each other, everyone is liable for whatever they caused. This is because everyone is acting how they should. But when there's a runner in the public domain, he's essentially digressing from the norm. He wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. The pedestrian wasn't doing what it was expected of him by jaywalking in the street. This would make him liable. Exactly. And the car wouldn't have swerved if it wasn't for the jaywalker. So the pedestrian is considered muad because of Adam Muad La Olam, which means any damages caused by him he is liable for, even though they weren't intentional? That's in Baba Kama 27b. Yes! I'm telling you that I couldn't have changed it. He should pay for your damages, bills, wages, and insurance. Okay, but couldn't the car company have changed their programming so as not to swerve into me? As I stated earlier, 
The program acted as it was designed to, which is to prevent the death of another individual. When the car's programming realized that it was going to kill the jaywalking pedestrian, if it were to continue <coughs> its path, it quickly swerved out of the way. While this caused an accident, there were no fatalities. The car's programming prevented a death, something that might have occurred had a human been driving. The only additional hardware I'd add to the car are cameras that would cover the 360 degree view of the car while it was turned on. This would one, absolve the car of any wrongdoing when it would prove the pedestrian would have been killed and the only option was to swerve into another lane, and two, help law enforcement agencies and the Baton identify the pedestrian to make them liable for all damages. The hardware would also include a storage device such as a memory stick or hard drive to store the video to be viewed at a later date if necessary. These updates would only be a few extra hundred dollars, an amount that is surely not enough to deter a potential buyer. Something a different technology change, which wouldn't necessarily make the car any safer, would. Fine. So if Mr. Rubenstein isn't liable, and neither is Mr. Levine and his company, does this, that make the pedestrian liable? Yes. With the given evidence, the Bay Dean can deduce that both, free, both I and the Oliva Insurance Company are cleared from liability. The ultimate wrongdoer is the pedestrian. Notwithstanding, because the pedestrian deemed responsible cannot be identified, all the monetary obligation is left to Mr. Shalom's insurance providers to pay for the damages and work it all out. I guess we'll be speaking again later, and please try not to run into me. I'll try, but I'm a klutz. <laughs> Poor Mr. Shalom's insurance company. So I'm still trying to understand the, uh, could you, you re-explain to us why the, well, no, you said the pedestrian's liable and the problem is we can't find the pedestrian, right? Mm -hmm. um, why is the pedestrian responsible for anything more, well, anything really? It sounded to me like you equated the pedestrian to the fallen tree, uh, which would then be not responsible at all. So um, the Roche, we read um, the situation in the Roche where when there's two people walking, um, like with a jug and a, and a, a, beam. a beam, and they're walking into each other, um, then if the jug and the beam both fall, then they're both responsible. He has to pay for the jug, he has to pay for the beam. But let's say the person with the beam is running in the Rashid Hara beam, and he hits the person with the jug. Now, suddenly, the jug person was just walking totally innocently and had nothing to do. It was the beam person that was actually digressing from the normal manner of walking in the street and so he is actually now held responsible so in this case we said that the pedestrian was like the, the person running holding the beam because he was jaywalking across the street and jaywalking is against the law it's digressing from the norm you know of walking and waiting for the light couldn't you apply that same logic to Ms. Rubenstein well, the, she's that the she and Mr. Shalom are she's the one with the beam and Mr. Shalom is the one with the jug I think that if you were trying to say why Mr. Shalom isn't liable, you could use that. But uh, no, I think Mr. Shalom would be liable in that case. Um, and also, we said that the car was not an extension of Ms. Rubenstein. So um, she, like, she um, wasn't directing the car to swerve into her. And the car's programming was actually trying to see the light. It was the right decision to swerve into it, even though um, it was still not Mr. Shalom. You also talked about the pedestrian being Moed. Can you give me more on that? Um, sure. Um, so <coughs> we read in um, Baba Kama 26A, that Adam Muad Olam, which means that anytime a person is in a situation, they are just responsible. Um, so what we said is the pedestrian jaywalking is responsible um, for just even even if like he was found, not found liable, he was responsible for being in the public domain. Everyone's responsible. It's just not a matter of who's liable. 
But when you're in a public domain, you have to be conscious of everything around you. And part of that consciousness is being responsible, knowing you know, sometimes that I'm gonna run into someone, so everyone has to go into the public domain, or should or be knowing that something could happen and have that responsibility in mind. In your original, um, in, in your written um, tshuva, um, you didn't really decide between whether the um, the car was a bore or a shore. You kind of left that open. Um, and here you seem to have um, focused more in on, on the shore. Mm -hmm. um, what led you to that, that focus? Um, we ultimately decided that because the car was moving, it's not stationary, that it was the shore. And then once we decided that, we also decided if it was shore Tom or shore Mua. And because with the pigs back that we were given, there was no history of damage, um, we said it was shore Tom. Could you make a claim that it's a shore Mua'ad, uh, given that it's, <laughs> this is going to sound a little strange. Um, since the car acts basically on human programming from Oliva Industries, um, it's basically human, it, its thought is essentially human thought, pre-programmed by a human being, right? Could you make the claim that because Adam Mu'ad al-Lam, that the car would also be Mu'ad as an extension of the programmer? I mean, it, I feel like, I feel like making that claim gets really tricky because so much of what we do today now is technology, and technology is essentially human-based, right? It's human, it's human moat. So that means that every single you know, technology error that occurs could essentially be traced back to the human that um, created it in the first place. But also, even if you stuck with that argument, um, I think there's too many algorithms and functions in the computer beyond human control that even after they designed it, there's so many different variables and things that could go wrong that it, it's so, the, po the probability of possibility of things that could happen, it's beyond thought, beyond human control. Also, sorry. Yeah. Also, the car is programmed as acting as pikuach nefesh, not to kill the pedestrian. And the car was not acting to cause the least damage because actually if it had hit the pedestrian, it would have caused less damage physically on the car and the company um, instead of swerving. So I think, oh, and also because Miss Rubenstein was in the car and she owns the car, but she can't control it. That does make the car kind of like her off or her, her shore. So that's what led us to saying it's her shore, even though it has like the human programming of being self-driving. I think the self-driving part more comes in in the fact that she's owned it so she can't control it. Hmm. Would it be reasonable to require Oliva Industries to make sure that the purchasers of these vehicles um, know that the car in this kind of situation is programmed to actually cause damage to somebody else's car? Um, yeah, that would be reasonable, uh, but they should also inform them that the, uh, the damage will only occur if in the case of an accident where more, derm more damage might occur, such as the death. Thank you very much. Thank you.